This Equipment World video is brought to you by Chevron Dello 600 ADF Ultra Low Ash Diesel Engine Oil. It's time to kick some ash. Hi everyone, welcome back to Equipment World. You're watching The Dirt. I'm your host Brian and today I'm here with a nice dose of depression for you because we're talking about fuel. Yes, fuel, that ridiculously expensive kind of red colored thing that you put into your machines and it just evaporates into thin air, taking all of your hard-earned money with it. That's what we're talking about. What we're going to talk about today, though, is how can we mitigate a little bit of that cost? The first topic I want to talk about when it comes to this conversation is a couple of programs that most people are not aware exist. And there's a good reason for that, because the OEMs don't necessarily want to advertise this as loudly as possible. But there are a couple OEMs out there that are offering fuel reimbursement programs, believe it or not. With their newer model equipment, they have a certain fuel efficiency guarantee. And if your equipment doesn't meet that fuel efficiency standard that they have set, they will actually reimburse a portion of your fuel bill. At the moment, I know that CAT and Volvo currently offer a fuel reimbursement program. You have to have one of their newer next gen machines. There are certain guidelines and parameters that you have to fall within. But if you do meet all of those requirements, you could be eligible to get a portion of your fuel bill reimbursed for those machines. And for some contractors, this is resulting in thousands per month per machine that qualifies. So you're talking some real money back in your pocket there. So that's the first thing I wanted to talk about is just make you aware that some of the OEMs are offering this. And again, I would encourage you to look into your OEM for your equipment to see if they offer any similar program. Now let's shift gears and talk about Everybody else who doesn't qualify for a magic program where money falls from the sky, let's talk about how we can mitigate some of our fuel cost on the job. But before we get into that, I want to take a second to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Chevron Lubricants. Protecting your diesel engine and its exhaust after treatment system has traditionally been seen as an either or proposition when it comes to choosing the engine oil that's going to protect your system. And that's exactly why Chevron spent more than a decade of R&D work developing a no compromise formulation. Now I don't have to tell you why a clogged DPF is bad news, but here's the real kick in the pants. 90% of that ash clogging up your DPF and then upping your fuel and maintenance costs, it comes from your engine oil. You might be thinking, why don't they make an engine oil with less ash in it then? You'll be happy to learn that Chevron agrees with you. They've developed a new ultra low ash diesel engine oil that is specifically designed to combat DPF ash clogging. Dello 600 ADF with OmniMax technology cuts sulfate ash by 60%, radically reducing the rate of DPF clogging and extending the DPF service life by two and a half times. Before you had to choose between protecting your engine or your after treatment system, now you don't. Dello 600 ADF with OmniMax technology. It's time to kick some ash. And the most obvious one that we really, really neglect in this industry is idle time. Idle time, where your machines are just sitting, evaporating fuel into thin air and taking all of your money with it. It's not necessary, especially this is actually costing you a lot more money in your company than you originally anticipate because it's not just on the fuel side that this is costing you money. With all of the tier four emission stuff going on right now, you have sensitive equipment in your exhaust system that needs high temperatures in order to operate correctly. And yes, I'm talking about the DPF and the SCR. So if you sit around idling machines, most people in the industry now are aware this is one of the most detrimental things you can do to a new tier four final engine. Idle time is a killer of all of these emissions after treatment packages. So all that to say, idle time is costing you more than just fuel money. But since this video topic is about fuel, we need to concentrate on the fuel. That's a lot of fuel. Think about 20 to 40. How many machines do you have in your fleet? Even if, even a small company of two to four machines, if you have those machines idling 60 percent of the time, which is actually a lot more common than everyone thinks, by the way, which we're gonna get into telematics here in just a minute. If you're idling 60% of the time with just four machines, that's a pretty hefty fuel bill that has earned you zero money. So idle time by itself is one of the quickest ways, as a, especially as a larger company, that you can really start to come down on your fuel bill 
start writing your operators that they need to shut the machines down if they aren't actively working them. And yes, I understand turbo temperatures and everything. Obviously, give it a minute or two to cool the engine for a second at idle before you shut it off. But that being said, if your operator is sitting there for 15 minutes waiting for the next truck, the engine of that machine should not be on. It should absolutely be off. Now, I also want to say a lot of guys in this current state like to think that it's really good to run your machines at half throttle because that means we're saving fuel, right? That means that we have to be lowering our costs as a business if I run all of my equipment at half throttle. Unfortunately, that is not the case. First of all, almost every single one of our modern day machines has an engine control unit on it, which is actively using the, the correct amount of fuel for the amount of load on the engine, which means it's not like the old school days where if the throttle's full wide open, you're just dumping fuel in the engine and watching it go up. Even when you're at full throttle nowadays, your ECU is only adding in enough fuel to keep your RPMs up under that given load. So it's not just dumping fuel in the engine. Now, again, going back to our emissions issues, if you don't run the machine at full throttle, you're actually building up a lot more diesel particulate, which is, guess what? It's clogging up your exhaust, which is a restriction, which is further hindering your fuel economy. But on top of that, now you're gonna run into emissions problems where you have even more cost. And remember, we, we did this to idle the machine to cut down on our costs, and now you're actually costing yourself more money. So that's something you need to be aware of, especially communicate that down to your operators, because especially with a lot of your old school operators who were around in the old school days before all of this computer technology, they think they're doing the right thing by running that machine at half throttle or quarter throttle. Look at how efficient I'm being. Look at how much fuel I'm saving. You need to do a good job of educating your employees. That is not how these new machines work, and it's actually costing significantly more money. Now, I do want to touch on telematics. This is something, especially as a mid-sized to large company, if you don't use telematics, you 100% should be using telematics and you should be using the data tracking available through the telematics package because now you can start to look into real idle times of your machines. You can find very quickly who your large offenders are for idle time in your company. And I'm not saying that to go out there and absolutely ream somebody. Instead, use this as a tool to make a quick phone call and say, hey, Joe, I noticed that you had six hours of idle time yesterday on the job, four hours of idle time the day before that. We need to do a better job of shutting that machine off when you're waiting for trucks or you're doing, you know, functions where you don't need to have the machine active. We need to make sure we're shutting that machine off. Telematics will give you all of that information of how long the machine was under load. Did they really need to have it in, in full power boost mode or could they have gone to eco mode? That's another great way to save fuel without sacrificing on the emission side is by using your machine's built-in eco mode. It's going to run at a slightly lower RPM or possibly a slightly lower pump pressure, but at the same time, you're keeping those exhaust temperatures up so that the emissions package is able to do its job. These are the sort of things that you get out of telematics that allow you to make very informed decisions on who you're gonna talk to and how you're gonna have those conversations. And ultimately, when you start cracking down on that, especially as a larger company, you're talking a substantial fuel savings because you're able to get idle time significantly lower for your entire fleet. So that's all I've got for today. You know, this has been a little bit of an interesting topic and we are living in some very interesting times right now. Hopefully this will help you and your business to save at least a little bit of money in one area or at least give you direction on how to pursue saving money in this area. So absolutely drop comments and questions down below and we'll catch you guys on the next episode of The Dirt.